Hello and welcome back to our beautiful kitchen. Today we're going to do some pre-slab work so that the fridge and the freezer don't get in the way when we come in to do the underfloor heating. So if you've watched the kitchen design video you know we're going to have some units in the sink along the back here. So we're going to slab that section just along the back 600 deep then once it's dried we can move the fridge and the freezer up onto there and then we'll be free to do the rest of the floor. So we're going to crack on and we'll explain everything as we go. Definitely not how the professionals would do it. But we are not professional. In any way, shape. As we <laughs> continually remind people. This is just a guide. Right, okay. That's very level. Good. Okay. <laughs> very level. It's very level. Rather than slightly level. Spot on level. So we've got our piece of timber cut, which is going to be a guide for the front of where we're slabbing to. The next thing that we need is something that goes around the perimeter. It's also going to act kind of as a height guide, but as part of this flooring system, there is some insulation which goes around the perimeter of the whole room. We're not slabbing the whole room today, of course. Um, and that has two purposes. One is for insulation so that the heat in the underfloor heated slab doesn't travel into the walls and because it's a heated floor it will expand and contract slightly and that's why we need that flexible insulated material around the outside and of course we are using natural materials as much as possible and so cork is the solution that we've gone for it's a 40 mil thick cork board which we'll need to cut down so that we can do all the way around the outside of the area that we're going to be putting some limecrete into so we're not really sure how it's going to fix to the wall but we'll get it in place and then we'll work it out. Our best guess at the moment is we might backfill it when we come to kind of plaster the walls. Mm -hmm. I think that the just the weight of the... The screed material. The screed just material is just going to yeah. hold it in place. That's my hope anyway. Yeah, we'll find out. And this is what it looks like. It's this expanded cork. This is 40 mil thick. Is it? Yeah, so the... Um, yeah. And so we'll just kind of cut it down the length to 75 mil or seven and a half centimeters so it matches the top of the slab. And the spec actually says 30 mil and the reason we went to a 40 mil initially was we were actually going to fit the cork board first and then plaster down to it because we knew that the hemp plaster was going to come out 40 mil but it hasn't happened in that order. So if you're doing this 30 mil is sufficient it's also just what we had available at the store that we went to so we just got what was there. We cool. actually bought it some ago. time ago <laughs> thinking that we would get to it last year but we didn't what kind of funny stuff this yeah white pencil would definitely be better I've got 
can't see that at all. Fancy. I don't know how this goes in. Do you feed it in from the top, maybe? No, there's a... There's something in there? Oh, yeah, maybe. And then... And then propel it down. Yeah. It's holding together nicely, yeah, though. Okay. That's good. As I said, I don't think it's as fragile as you think. It's Maybe not. Fragile. Yeah, it is quite fragile. Yeah. Okay. So that's going to go there. Yeah, so these are the bits that I think we'll have to come and backfill with just when we Some next, pasta. When we next yeah, plaster. We'll just fill all the gaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, we've done a bunch of thinking, problem solving, and cutting of things. We've got our front board in place, we've got our cork perimeter in place, and everything is pretty much the right height. The really good news is the cork was difficult to mark because the pencil line didn't show up, even the white pencil, but it was very easy to cut, kind of like a polystyrene sheet. And the other thing that's great is we don't really need to stick it to the wall. We're just able to put it in place, and then I think when we put in some Limecrete, it will just hold everything, no problem at all. There are some gaps behind, but we'll backfill that when we come to do the rest of the plastering. So with all of that in place, I think it's a good time to take a break for lunch. And then when we come back, we will mix up some Limecrete. just experimenting a bit with the ratios to get the right consistency and that is too much water Yeah. There's a bit more for you. I guess a bit easier to move around. Yeah, that takes more physical strength. Yeah. I think you can do that kind of motion with the with the straight legs rather than with the the float. Well. It's almost like you need to put down more material and then yeah. move it back. Yeah. So I'll go get you some more. Yes, please. Can I it down or leave it to you? 
And just put it... much easier when you watch someone else do it. When you watch something on a video and you think, oh, it can't be so difficult. And then, you know, you have people say, oh, just do this. And it's, it's, it's just not like that <laughs> until you do it yourself and you realise, oh, it's just not that easy. saying that if I do it over this length of, and it's to look at that yeah I think that's pretty pretty good and as long as we can do that in both directions or three directions or yeah. a couple of okay it does not really work to my perfectionist nature
Oh, 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 look at that. That's amazing. So much better than I was expecting. Yeah. <laughs> you just need to come and finish redo that edge again. Yep, perfect. Okay, cool. So, see? Tactics. I've seen it on YouTube. <laughs> so it must be true. <laughs> they must have done it right. They must have. <laughs> well, this seems to be working, even if it's unconventional. Look at that. It's like a cheesecake. So let's have a moment of truth and reality. I don't know how many hours we've been working on this. It's very slow going. But when I started, I was kind of freaking out. So right now I'm enjoying it. It's quite relaxing and I'm, I'm getting it nice. Um, but I was freaking out because, and this happens almost always, when you try something new and you have no idea what you're doing and you have no idea to do the thing that you need to do, which in this case is to get it level. Uh, and I was freaking out so much in my head because I didn't know what I was doing and I like to be able to do things well. I was like, God, just turn off the camera. I have to work out how to do it first. So I know that there's people that send us comments and they're like, oh, you guys are doing so well. In my head, I'm freaking out. It's kind of like when you drive in a big city and there's so much traffic around you and you're like, ah, that's what happens every time we do something new until we've worked out how it works and how to do it. And I'm still obviously not an expert. Um, but yeah, as much as you watch someone who's never done something before, it looks so easy. Let me tell you, it's not. It's just, it's not. Right, rant over. <laughs> back, back, to to, work. back to soothing. Yeah, and I think one of the things that is the most difficult when you're doing something for the first time is knowing where the tolerances are. When you've done something many times, you kind of have a good feel for it and you're like, oh yeah, I know I can cut that corner or I know that doesn't have to be 100% perfect because I'll come back later and, and tidy it up or finish it off. This is not the finished floor, but it is the, the foundation on which the, the, the limestone flags or tiles or whatever we end up putting down are going to be set onto. So we kind of think that it needs to be pretty flat and level so that you've got a good base for putting the, the finishing layer onto. But we may be going like way over the top with the, the level of flatness and the level of detail and making it you know 100% millimeter perfect. Or maybe we're doing the right thing, we don't know. Where is the tolerance with something like this? Is it try and get it inside of the lines on the spirit level? Is it do it by eye or is it trying to get it like a piece of glass. That would be really useful information if somebody can uh, can let us know. But we're getting there, which is good. And something else that we learned is the first mix was way too dry. I uh, mm. couldn't really move it around. This is much better, so it's a little bit wetter. So Guy, do you know what the ratio was? No. No. <laughs> So in terms of the lime to sand ratio, it's one part lime to three parts sand. And in all the research we've done, we've seen various ratios from two to one, all the way up to, I think four to one, four sand, one lime. So we kind of went in the middle. The first mix had about 15 liters of water. The second mix probably had closer to 20. And the bucket measures that I've been using are 15 each. So someone who's better at math can work out what the ratio is.
seems to work well coming at an angle like that. Yeah. Because then you're kind of bringing it into the uh, the gap next to the piece of shadowing. Yep. There you go. Right. Learning. Learning. This is not a skill I thought I would ever have to learn. I totally understand why people find this relaxing. To watch. <laughs> to watch, yeah. Definitely easier to watch. <laughs> Definitely getting better. Well, you're a fast learner. Freaking out has stopped. Good. At least. <laughs> Some might say if you're not freaking out when you start, you're not doing it right. Not trying hard. Not stepping outside your comfort zone enough. And the other thing, just while we're on this, for all of those who might be asking, well, why don't you just get a professional in? Portugal has a real lack of builders and almost no builders who use natural materials. So we could probably have got some help from a builder, but you wait, I don't know how many, we asked someone about a roof and they were like, yeah, I'm booked through to the end of 2024 or something ridiculous. So, where we live in the interior, if you want anything done in any timely fashion, you have to do it yourself. Or you have to wait. Yeah, or you have to be willing to wait. And I'm not willing to live in a tent for another three years while I wait for someone to come and slide on the floor. But also the, the way that we want to do things is unconventional. And so there's always going to be fewer of those people available no. I mean, as well. I mean, it's the same with plasterers. Uh, lime plasterers, there are some in Portugal for sure. I don't know about here in the interior. There's for sure no lime hemp plasterers uh, that I've heard of, seen of. Um, very few people are doing lime hemp plastering, certainly anywhere near where, where we live. That we know of. That we know of, yeah. There might be some, but again, they, they aren't very common. And the other question for sure that we'll get is why am I doing this and not Guy? Because I want to. Well, I would say that is a pretty good job for someone who doesn't know what they're doing. Yeah, well, the only way you learn is by doing. I've you heard know. that somewhere before. <laughs> It's definitely one of our mottos. Um, so for those who kind of get scared of this fact, like I was freaking out, the only way to get over that and to not think that it's a bad thing, because it's not, um, is to just keep practicing. And I have a really bad habit, and guys a really bad habit, of expecting to be good at something in the first 10 minutes. Um, probably took me an hour to get over my freaking out in this. But I'm really happy with like this much of it. <laughs> that bit is like the learning section. Um, Since lunch, it took us this four and that hours is ish. Yeah, maybe a bit more than four hours and three and a half bags of lime and many buckets of sand. So we have days and days and days of this once we get a wonderful heating pipe work down. And it's probably worth saying about the, the underfloor heating doesn't run under the units. I know, so that's why we could put this down, is we you don't run underfloor heating pipes under units because, especially in a kitchen, then you're heating up all the food that's in your cupboards, but it's also wasted energy because it doesn't need to be warm under there. Um, I had a bit of a concern about condensation because there will be moisture passing through our vapour permeable walls. And floor. Um, and floor. But the solution for that is to make sure at the top that there's some vents. I might also put some vents in at the kickboard level just to make sure that there's kind of a flow of air. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the way to do it. And also this hemp plaster is really good at humidity control, so that will also help it quite some. 
and I actually consulted some lime specialists and some hemp lime specialists just about that to make sure that I was on the right track and that's what they said. Cool. So there you go. Oh, my legs. Oh. <clears throat> there we go. I think we're done. Uh, we got a bit more done than we planned. We were only going to do the strip across the back wall of the room, but we had some mix left over, so we kind of turned it into an L shape, uh, which is good because this whole thing was really A, about practicing to get our eye in with this new technique and new set of skills that we need when we do this top slab, but also so that we've got somewhere to store stuff. The One of the most frustrating things about renovation, particularly when you're living on site to some degree is just constantly moving stuff around and we have a lot of stuff and we've acquired a lot of stuff since we moved here and so having somewhere solid that's out of the way of all the underfloor heating pipe work and all the other slabbing that needs to be done will be quite useful another reason that we wanted to do this is to be able to calculate materials so we have one pallet's worth of nhl5 and when i did the initial calculation a long time ago for the sub for the the, the lacquer layer plus this layer, I did a calculation and I wanted to kind of double check that that calculation is still correct based on how much we used up already. Um, so I'll be able to calculate how many square meters we did here and how many bags we used and then be able to double check if we have enough NHL5 and if not, I'll have to order another pallet. I think we're gonna need some more. Yeah, I think so too. Well, that's okay. So we are done for now. After about 10 days or so, we'll be able to put some boards down and walk on it if we need to, but it's gonna take about a month in total before we can put any real pressure on here. And that's another reason we wanted to crack on with this. But that's it for now. We will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.